マッシュ竹を見習え竹竹はなどんな天候でも力強く生きていくしなやかさがあるんだ今のお前に足りないものそうそれはバンプーバンプーバンプーバンプーバンプー薬やってるだろこの人ハロー everyone For those who are visiting for the first time and for those who support the channel, welcome. I'm Ashley. I've been printing for a relatively short period of time, and admittedly, I am not an expert. I'm a casual user who really likes 3D printers. Before I go into this long term review, I should probably tell you how I got to this printer. Starting with my first 3D printer, the Crowdy Ender 3 Pro, this printer、uh, is a gateway into the hobby. Anyone who starts with an Ender 3 Pro as their first printer, do me a favor. Pull them aside, give them a hug, and tell them it's going to be all right. The dark times are over. You survived it, and you're stronger for it. I spent 100 greenbacks on this printer initially. As this was my first printer, I can technically say it was my best printer. I learned a lot, I built the printer, had taken it apart, upgraded it. Blah, blah, blah. While I can say it helped shape my 3D printing journey, I would not recommend it to anyone who isn't a masochist. I spent a lot, I learned a lot, but it was time to move on. I had the opportunity to try another brand,、uh, Prusa MK3S Plus. It was alright, it printed fine, had fewer issues, but it was slow, like the Ender. I never got a chance to call the legendary Prusa support. Now that I think about it, I never called Crowdy either. But the hobby was getting expensive. And I would have dropped it altogether since it became more about the printer versus the prints. So, mid 2022,、uh, I saw a Linus Tech Tips video about the Anchormate N5. I quickly jumped on the Kickstarter.、Uh, Anchor. Actually, had a successful Kickstarter, which is probably the,、um, the most successful 3D printer Kickstarter.、Um, and this was actually my second Kickstarter ever.、Uh, but the brand was well known, Anchor. LTT was well known.、Uh, and I could get a fast printer for less than a Prusa kit at about $600.、Bucks. Then they announced a V6 color engine.、Uh, think of it like an, an AMS, which can handle six colors. And I was like, sign me up. Then another brand was making the rounds right after that Kickstarter. This new company hardly had any online presence, but they had a Kickstarter. The marketing was slick. There were quick looks from YouTubers, which were mesmerizing. And the one thing that jumped out of the screen and slapped me across the face was they would end their campaign in a month, and the first shipments would be coming in a month. I had a very expensive decision. I had already spent way too much on that Ender. That initial $100 investment cost me hundreds in upgrades, countless hours in building, rebuilding, tuning, tweaking. And while the results were getting good, it was inconsistent. But they were passable. The speed, from what I know now, was atrocious. So that Anchor Make was shipping sometime in 2022. That's the only info I had. And this new company, Bamboo, was promising a month. Which would be right around my birthday. Was it a sign? Probably not, because if it had been a sign, it probably would have stopped me from sinking $900 into that anchor. Anyway, I waited the day Bamboo was launching their Kickstarter, and I was sitting in my car,、uh, ready to、uh, basically just pledge for the X1 Carbon with AMS, the X1CC. So the day of, I'm sitting in my car again, waiting. Campaign goes live, and the site froze. Hit refresh, it froze again. <laughs> Hit refresh, then it crashed. So, as I'm hitting refresh, this was going on for about another minute.、Um, again, this would be my third Kickstarter ever. <laughs> the first one was like a Witcher Ronin bundle. The second one was the Anchor Mate, but this was the first time I was trying to get in on the early bird. So, in between the page reloads that did work, the bundle counts were dropping. 
Actually, let me stop for a second. Did you know there were two Bamboo Lab printers at the time? There was the X1 and the X1 Carbon. The X1 was missing things like a hardened nozzle, it didn't have a camera, uh, had plastic panels instead of metal panels, didn't have a carbon filter. Uh, but at this point, I would have been happy with either printer. The idea of getting a fast and accurate printer with prints was intriguing. I could almost, I could always get a camera or use a smart cam. I didn't print anything other than PLA and PETG, uh, so the hardened stuff wasn't a big deal. But I was aiming for the X1 Carbon. So I hit refresh, hit refresh. The X1 Carbon was nearly out. So I'm aiming for this X1 Carbon combo, but again, I could go with the other one. So I hit refresh and I kept hitting it and it was crashing and locking up. And the last refresh before I'm like, hey, the bundle's running out. I hit refresh and the X1 Carbon sold out. Better luck next time. I was a little bummed out, pissed off actually. So, you know, I'm just gonna go for the X1, whatever. So I hit refresh again and the X1 Carbon bundle was back. Someone had backed out, they had gotten cold feet. So I hit pledge and I was in. Spent the rest of the day singing Walking on Sunshine. So Bamboo Lab at the time wanted a thousand bucks for the printer combo. It was, and it was about a hundred dollars for shipping. I wasn't flush with cash, spent a lot of money on those previous printers, uh, but I did scrounge up the funds, painfully paid for the fee, and I waited. Uh, they actually had some stretch goals for extra parts uh, if they sold a certain number of units. And they were in constant communication with everyone who was a, uh, who pledged, uh, a campaign backer. The stretch goal actually wasn't met, but they still offered the goal to everyone. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm starting to like this company. So the printer was slated to come mid-August of 2022. Uh, got my tracking number, wasn't lost or stolen, wasn't damaged. Uh, came to my house. It was a big box, but it was compact. I had already seen a bunch of unboxings and first looks, and setup was a breeze. Um, it almost seems a little too easy. You just remove some screws, attach a screen, you turn it on, connect it to the internet, update it, blah, blah. You probably would have seen a bunch of this. Um, actually, I have a confession. I've never printed a Benchy in all of my time printing, and to this day, I've still never printed a Benchy. And I think at this point, it's almost a point of pride. Uh, so I printed an articulating slug. It came out fine. You know, I don't know how to explain this better, but let me say it slowly and make the point clear. I loaded the file into Bamboo Studio, hit slice, sent the print over. I didn't need to load into a memory card and walk over to the printer like a Neanderthal. I sliced, sent print, and it printed fine. Perfect. Whatever, I didn't need to do anything. The AMS took the filament, loaded it, heated the parts, leveled the bed, and printed. Look, I know some brands get love and hate, but just printing fine with a good first layer was the hallmark of a great printer. But this was different. It didn't just print fine, it printed fast and fine. The, the speed difference was insane. It was like three to five times faster than the Prusa and the Ender. And again, the Ender was like a hundred bucks. What can you expect? But the Prusa was more expensive. Okay, let's talk about 3D printers for a hot second. When I got my Ender, I was initially working on it constantly. Amazon was my best friend. I knew that having parts on hand in case of issues was just practice, like common practice. Downtime sucks. So I did what any PTSD adult victim of that Ender normally does. I ordered a bunch of parts from bamboo, built plates, hot ends, covers, fans, whatever they had in stock, except for like another screen. 14 months later, 95% of those parts are still in their original boxes. This printer is, was, and continues to be reliable. So in 2022, bamboo recommended glue stick for the printer to help the prints release from the cool plate. I used the glue stick for about a week. 
and I scraped it all off, washed the plate, and I went back to my tried and true Vision Miner Nano Polymer, not sponsored. Uh, it's an IPA-based glue, but it, it's a release agent when it cools. Anyway, it works, works perfectly fine for bamboo printers. Uh, it doesn't leave a tacky residue or anything, but I'm still on my original cool plate. The, the cool plate is a sticker, and it's supposed to last uh, a couple months, but I wouldn't know because I'm still on my original. But with the bamboo printer, I had to relearn some things about 3D printers. One, PLA is very forgiven on temperature. You don't need to cook a build plate to 55C or 60C. 35 Celsius has been fine for the cool plate. And this is for PEI and PEO. Uh, it might be why my cool plate sticker held up so well. So Bamboo being a new company had some growing pains. Security researchers found the printer uh, open within network uh, or network controls, uh, which was open and unencrypted. This wasn't a big deal because you would have to be on your network and if to exploit it. And if someone's on your network, that was the least of your worries. But anyway, Bamboo released a statement thanking the researcher and quickly patched the issue. Um, they did what everyone in the community wants. You know, they acknowledge the issue, they thank the researcher, uh, they set up a timetable for resolution, they fixed the problem, which was faster than their timetable. Uh, but it's going to be a common theme throughout this video. I'll reiterate the specs. Uh, the X1 Carbon is a core XY 3D printer capable of 500 millimeters per second print speed. This is marketing. With some tweaks and perfect conditions, you may hit those speeds, but realistically, you're printing at two to 300 millimeters per second, which is plenty fast. The build plate is 256 millimeters cubed. You do lose some of that area due, an due to an exclusion zone. Uh, there's a way to recover it by blocking a part where the filament cutter goes. There's a 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second camera, touchscreen, top glass, front panel, metal all around. I have the AMS unit, which handles up the four, four spools of non-abrasive filament, uh, and of course you would stay away from TPU as well. Uh, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon is currently the most expensive in the lineup as of this recording, and it might be overkill depending on your needs. Uh, it has an auxiliary cooling fan and a chamber blowing fan. Uh, that blower fan in the back is probably the loudest part of it, but there's a way you can uh, still have your prints and not have to deal with that. The touchscreen. This is the brains of the system. Most functionality can be accessed here. The interface can be separated into five parts. Home can access most of the other parts, but the light at the top corner may be its focal point. Uh, one down from the home button has the core of the printer's functions. Nozzle, build plate temperature controls, chamber temperature and speed controls. Controls for the hot end, auxiliary and chamber fans, full control of the homing of X, Y, and Z, and lastly, extruder controls. Over to the right tab is filament controls. You can load, unload, change your filament. Uh, you can also change your color and type. And without an AMS, you can also change the characteristics of the back spool holder. Utilities has calibrations and a system um, dry filament was added. The dry filament was not there during the 2022 updates, so it's a recent addition. Print options, each part is explained here, and so I won't dwell on it. I also released a YouTube short about this setting. The third option shows the internal memory with the last printed item, internal Bamboo Labs models. If you tab over, you'll see what's on your memory card, uh, and that memory card can be inserted on the right-hand side of the screen and any item that you cached within it. The fourth setting is for your account. Uh, so you'll see your account name and a sign, sign out option. Um, the general portion will show the memory card size, uh, the option to format the card. You can record video directly to the card. Uh, this is different from a time lapse, so it's just regular video, uh, which uses more space than a time lapse. Land mode live view shows you the internal camera when you're in land mode, and this was added in August of 2023. And the rest shows device info, but if you press device info, you can actually see your total printing hours. Uh, on to network, 
This is where you can connect to a 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless network or switch to LAN only mode. Lastly, there's maintenance. This was added in early 2023 and it has reminders and links to the Bamboo Wiki showing cleaning and other maintenance steps. A nice touch to keep your printer running in tip top shape. The comment bubble at the bottom is for messages. This is error messages and other notifications. The core of the screen's OS is similar to the original firmware, but there were some things added in the last 14 months, like the ability to exclude failing objects from printing. Maintenance. Over time, the printer has had many updates. One of those updates were maintenance reminders. Clean the carbon rods, grease the Z rods, clean fans, replace filters, and whatnot. Your maintenance routine varies depending on what you print, but it was a nice touch getting reminders. I have replaced normal wear parts, filament cutter blade, nozzle wiper, PTFE tubes in the AMS and the printer itself. Every so often I will put on a new nozzle, but nothing major. The only minor repair inside the printer itself was taking the extruder apart to remove some broken filament. All of the steps can be found on the Bamboo Lab Wiki and their YouTube channel. The Automatic Material System, or AMS. The AMS is the one feature that sets the bamboo printers apart from other brands. At first, I thought it was just for multicolors, but it is much, much more. Okay, let's get the bad out of the way. If you're doing multicolored prints without any forethought, you will be using a ton of filament. Yes, the AMS can be wasteful, but if you're smart about it, you can get away with a few filament changes and minimize your filament loss. Each filament change adds about 90 seconds to your print time. The process is as follows. The printer will cut the filament, move the print head to the back of the printer, retract the filament back into the AMS, then it will push out the new filament, purge the last color, or the colloquial term poop. From there, it will either go into a prime tower or directly to the model. There are ways to reduce the filament purge, like manually setting the purge amounts, or purging filament into the model itself. Okay, now on to the good. Over the last 14 months, my AMS has gone through thousands of filament changes and color swaps. It has been solid, and I only changed out a few parts due to maintenance like the PTFE tubes or swapping out its motherboard. More on that later. So the AMS has some interesting features, some that were there from the beginning and some that were added through firmware updates. It can hold four kilograms worth of filament and most standard spools will fit fine. If you use bamboo filament, there are NFC tags that will automatically detect the filament type and best conditions to print, like reminding you to use certain build plates. It's a dry box, so you can keep your filament relatively dry. It has a humidity sensor, so you get a basic red, yellow, green indication about humidity. It works as filament redundancy, which means if you run out of filament and you have similar filament keyed in, the, in your profiles, it will just pull from that and continue on. And continuing with that logic, you can actually use up filament instead of having nearly spent rolls laying around. You can use it all. You can use it for support material. There's filament that is specific to breakaway support, but you can also mix PLA and PETG as support. They don't bond well, so it's a cheaper alternative to dedicated support material. Then there are the edge cases. I was recently away from my printer, hundreds of miles away to be precise, and I was able to print every day I was gone. Only needed to have someone at the printer to clear the plate. The person who cleared the plate was not familiar with the printer outside of clearing the plate, and again, I did not miss a day of printing. So yeah, reliable would be an understatement. Support. The AMS is the first and only reason I called support. It didn't fail or anything, but I wanted to get a part from the store and I needed support to send me an upgraded part. Since my unit was a first generation Kickstarter, the part was not in the store. My interactions with support was simple. I sent a ticket over to Bamboo uh, through the Handy app, got a response in an hour. They asked me for my name, email, reason for contact, etc. Then asked for a photo or video of what the issue was and uh, a final photo of the AMS 
unit disassembled with the serial number and my info again. All in all, everything was sorted out that day and I had the upgraded AMS mainboard in a week. I suffered no downtime. Cloud, LAN only, and sneaker net. This will probably be the most controversial topic, so let's talk about how you can print on an X1 Carbon. You can print using an SD card. That means you can place G-code or a 3MF file on a memory card, walk it over to the printer, and print from the touchscreen. LAN only mode. The printer will disconnect from Bamboo servers and will only function with a local PC. The Bamboo Handy app will no longer talk to the printer. You can have most functions of the printer available though. Starting, pausing, stopping print jobs, you have full access to the camera, you can load and unload filament, and basically do most things you could with the cloud. The cloud. This is the full experience. You can print from anywhere on earth. You can print from a computer. You can print from a cell phone. With the advent of Maker World, you can print without ever touching a slicer program. All of your filament settings and print profiles migrate to your account. You can print from history, view time lapses, and otherwise get the full printer experience. Now, the cloud is optional. I repeat, the cloud is optional. If you don't feel comfortable using a cloud service, you can go LAN only or sneaker net. You do lose out on getting updates, but if you were printing fine without the updates, it becomes a non-issue. So being a first generation user, I got to see a few things firsthand. I saw firmware updates fix glaring bugs like the build plate try to lower beyond its physical limits for a few seconds, causing a horrible grinding noise. There were a few minor issues that cropped up throughout the last 14 months, but they were quashed during general updates and recommendations from the community. So I cannot actually show you what they were. Not everything was sunshine. There were actual issues. Mid-August of 2023, Bamboo Lab had a cloud outage which introduced a huge glitch. Queued print jobs were sent, causing some printers physical damage due to items still on their build plates. There was a blog post and a promise to fix the issue and make whole people who were affected. While this has never affected me personally, it isn't a jarring example of a failure on Bamboo Lab. It is also a reason why the cloud may scare people off. But again, the cloud is optional. Bamboo has a history of stumbling, addressing, correcting issues. They do not rely on the community to fix their issues, so they want to take responsibility for any successes and failures. That is a mixed response. They're a very new company, so they could be forgiven for some missteps, but there will come a time when the training wheels have to come off. Being one of the top consumer printers in such a short time will put crosshairs on everything they do. But Bamboo Lab is actively listening to the community and integrating features, making an already great printer into a juggernaut that leapt to the top of 3D printer lists. So where does that leave us? Is the printer perfect? We aren't children, nothing is perfect. If you've seen my other videos, I often say, don't let perfection be the enemy of good enough. What I can say, this is the best printer I own. Take that with a grain of salt, since I only have a few. Would I buy it again? Easily, yes. Here are some prints over the last 14 months. I do appreciate everyone who's made it to the end. This is my first review, so if I'm a little shaky, 
that's the reason why. Uh, hit that bell notification, subscribe, hit the like button, comment, what have you. Um, and again, thank you. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about the Anchormate M5. It did show up in 2022, December of 2022 to be exact, four months after the X1 Carbon. The V6 color engine is still being worked on, so it will come sometime in 2023, and the Kickstarter backers will get it first. I'll give you a preview of what I'm doing with the Anchor. It's still in the box unopened. Thanks for watching.